if you want to get your child support lowered, then you are in the right place. I'm Damon Moore. I'm an attorney and a mediator. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about ways that you get your child support order lowered. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you actually know the law. A lot of you are walking in the court without knowing the law. And that's where you're wrong. It doesn't have to be that way. You can go to the library or get on the internet or do any number of other things to look up state law. By knowing the law, you're going to protect yourself from people who are going to try to take advantage of the fact that you don't know the law. Because if nothing else, it'll enable you to ask better questions to the lawyer that you're uh, that you retain. And you should not assume that just because someone you know who lives in another state uh, is paying a certain amount or receiving a certain amount that you would pay or receive uh, a similar amount. Each state has a method uh, in place for calculating child support and those methods, they, they, they vary considerably. So, in, for example, in some states, the uh, income of one parent is taken into account but not the other parent and in other states uh, the income of both parents is taken into account when calculating the child support i i even saw a, a study once the study compared uh, the outcomes in each state when you took a father who was earning fifty-five thousand a year a mother who was earning forty-five thousand a year two children and a custody or a possession and access schedule or visitation schedule, as some call it, a possession and access schedule that was less than 50-50. And they took all those set of factors, they plugged them in and they said, okay, who's going to get what in each given, in each given state? And in one state, the father uh, ended up paying four hundred and two dollars a month in child support and in another state the uh, the the father ended up paying eleven hundred dollars or over eleven hundred dollars per month in in child support when different laws result in different outcomes like that you've got to make sure that you understand what the laws are in your particular state. Another reason that you have to know the law is that you place yourself at a significant disadvantage when you don't know the law because it impacts your ability to negotiate with the other side. It's hard to negotiate with the other party when you don't know what would happen if you go to court. And I'll tell you, females seem to be really good at this. When I'm representing someone in a case as a lawyer or I'm handling a mediation and the parties are talking to me one-on-one, -on -one, one of the most popular questions or one of the most common questions that I get from, from females is something along the lines of how much can I get if I go to court? The, uh, by the way, the second most common question is something along the lines of how can I limit the amount of access that uh, that the dad has to the child? But that's a that's a a topic for uh, for another uh, another day. If you're if you're in a situation where the other side knows what they want or what they could get, and you don't know what you could get, then it really has an impact on on the positions that you take. Uh, when you're doing your negotiations. And so it's really important that you get an understanding of, of what is most likely to happen if you were to go to court. Also, you need to know whether there are any requirements that have to be completed before you can actually go into court. So for example, in many states, you're not supposed to be able to modify the orders unless a certain amount of time has passed and income has changed by a certain amount. You need to know what that time frame is and you need to know what that amount is. I've seen 
some courts say, or some, I've seen the laws in some states say, uh, you've got to, you've got to wait three years. And then I've seen some laws say that you've got to wait 12 months. And so, you know, that's critical that you understand uh, what you're, what you're dealing with. You, you also need to determine whether the, the law in your state allows judges to enter orders that vary from the, uh, from the child support guidelines. So for example, in Texas, they use something that they call child support guidelines. But the Texas Family Code addresses that. Give me just a second. I'm going to, I've, I've, I've reached the parking lot here. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull in and I'm just going to hang out here for just a second so I can, so I can read something to you that I think is important for you to know. So the Texas Family Code says the court may order periodic child support payments in an amount other than that established by the guidelines if the evidence rebuts the presumption that application of the guidelines is in the best interest of the child and justifies a variance from the guidelines. What they're saying is that you've got these child support guidelines, but if you can show that it's in the best interest of the child that a different dollar amount is is ordered. And if you can show that there's evidence that justifies variance from the guidelines, then the judge will, will order a different uh, amount of child support. Now, the Texas Family Code also gives you a list of factors that the court can consider. I'm not going to dig into those at the moment uh, because all you need to know at this moment is that some of those factors exist. But if enough people subscribe to this video, then I'll make another video and I'll provide a link in the description or comments and that will enable you to be able to check out a video about those factors. And in different states, there are a lot of factors and so that could be something that's very, very useful for you. So the second thing that you can do, you can get the other party to agree to lower the child support obligation. If you can get the other party to agree, then, then the court will order that lower child support. But there's no guarantee that the other party will agree to a lower child support obligation. Uh, and in, in many instances, I, you know, I, I, I think that the reason for this is obvious, but, but we can still go through a couple of them because I think it'll be very helpful for you. In many instances, your child support will increase the quality of life of the other party. So for example, child support could make daycare possible, which would free up uh, or enable the other party to uh, work more or pursue a career or return to school or any number of other things. Or child support could play a role in determining whether the other parent has a car or a particular type of car. Or child support could be used to pay for utilities or other things at the, at the other party's home. And that would enable the other party to have a little bit more uh, available income for entertainment or various other things. So I bring those up because I think it's important that you understand that the other party may be reluctant to agree to receiving less money than he or she would receive if the case went to court. And when you ask someone uh, to lower their support obligation, you're asking that person to, to agree to do something that might not be in that person's financial best interest, or at least it might not be perceived to be in that person's financial best interest. So you need to be prepared to show the other person how lowering the child support obligation is in the child's best interest and is in the other party's best interest. I think there are a couple of ways you could do that. One way to do it is to show the other party how an excessive child support order will lead, uh, will lead you to be unable to pay child support. I think another way to do it is to show the other party how an excessive child support order will lead you to take actions that will cost the other person financially. 
there are a broad range of, of things that you can that you could use as examples to show how it's going to cost that person financially. But you have to be very careful when you're delivering that information because you don't want to sound like you're threatening the other person. Uh, because sometimes uh, when a person feels that you're threatening them, then they may respond a lot more aggressively than you want them to respond. And you'll end up blowing the deal up uh, when that's not something that you had to do. So a third reason or a third way that you can get your child support lowered is to have possession of the child 50% of the time. So in most states, the child support guidelines are based on this expectation or this understanding that you're going to have or uh, that you're going to have possession of the child a certain amount of time so when you uh, when you have possession of the child for a longer period of time from that which was contemplated when creating the standard possession schedule it puts you in a position to be able to argue that your child support obligation should be lowered because you've got the child for a longer period of time than than, than what was contemplated when the order was uh, was first put in place. So I'm not sure that that made sense. Let's, let me let me give you a very quick example. So let's say when your child support order is put in place, you and I'm just making this number up. You owe. Uh, $800 a month, but the expectation was that you were going to have the child 40% of the time. And uh, somehow you've managed to have possession of the child 45% of the time. Then you might go into court and say, hey, I should have a reduction because I've got the child more than what you thought I was going to have when you put in that that order. One of the things I think it's important to 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 say, if I didn't say it earlier, is that you can get a reduction without having the child 50%. You just want to try to get the child more than what is standard. And if you can get the child to 50% of the time, then you're in a position to be able to say that there should be no child support. So, you know, so that's something that I think is really important for you to, 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 to be on top of. Fourth way for you to be able to get your child support obligation lowered is to prove that you make less money than you used to make. So if you already have a child support order in place, but you make less money than you made at the time that the order was put in place, then you may be eligible to have that child support lowered. But you have to watch out because the other side may try to argue that you are purposely underemployed. And you may want to talk to a lawyer about some ways to overcome that argument. However, the good news is that that argument can be overcome. And then a fifth way for you to get your child support lowered is to hire an attorney. Now, the Office of Attorney General is not your attorney. In many instances, the only reason the Office of Attorney General is involved in a case, and this may not even apply to you, this may apply to certain people, uh, particularly people who have lower income or people who, are, who have a child whose insurance is being covered by the state. In most instances, uh, or in, in many, arguably most instances, the Attorney General is only involved in your case because the state is concerned that it's going to be on the hook for the health insurance and they don't want to be on the hook for the health insurance so they're getting involved because if it's possible to get one of the other uh, one of the two parents to pay for that health insurance then the state wants to do that so if you hire an attorney or if you have your own attorney that attorney is going to be very helpful for you in doing three things first your attorney should be able to help you understand what the law is and how it will apply to your case. Second, your attorney is likely to be able to help you calculate what your child support should be and whether you're eligible to receive certain credits 
evidence that could lower the child support obligation. And third, if a contested hearing is necessary, then your attorney is likely to be able to help you submit evidence that you need to submit in order to get the judge to treat your case in a way that's different from the way the guidelines say that the judge should treat it. Now this is really important in two situations. So let's say you're in a state that considers the income of both parties when calculating the child support. And in those states, you're going to want to obtain the income of the other parent because it could play a role in in lowering your child support obligation. The other parent might know that. And so let's say the other parent decides that, 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 that he or she is going to resist your efforts to obtain the financial information. This happens a lot in, in cases where the parents are not on good terms, where there's a lot of uh, bad feeling among the parents. Uh, it's not uncommon for a parent to say, hey, I'm not, I'm not sharing that information because I don't want him knowing uh, where I live or where I work or how much I earn or those kinds of things. That, that happens a lot. So if you have an attorney, your attorney is going to be very adept at obtaining that information. The other situation is, is when you need to prove that you have, uh, that you've had the child for a certain amount of time, or you need to compel witnesses to speak on your behalf or provide phone records. If you haven't had any experience in that, then you would benefit from having a lawyer who can provide that information. So, and, and, and actually, let me, let me, I was just about to conclude. Let me, let me say one more thing. You can do this without a lawyer, but Sometimes it's very difficult to, to do certain things without a lawyer, and, and it is often very difficult to handle the task when you have a very short window. If, you, if, if you're interested in, in representing yourself in one of these cases, I've got a video on my channel. I think it's called The Four Keys to Representing Yourself in Court. Uh, you can check that out. It will provide some useful very useful information for you uh, on what those keys are, and then you know that will help you make a much more educated decision about whether you should represent yourself or uh, whether you should hire someone else. I just want to make sure I mention that. So those are the five ways to get your child support lowered, but I want you to know those are not the only ways to get your child support lowered. Press the like button and the subscribe button if you want more videos about lowering your child support. YouTube does a really good job of letting us know uh, that a person has subscribed to a particular video. And if I see that a number of people have, have subscribed to a video about child support, then it'll encourage me to make more videos about child support. And uh, I'll make a, a video where I do a deep dive into each of the factors that are involved so you know exactly what a judge is thinking about. So, so just keep that in mind as you're considering whether to like and or subscribe to this particular video. I look forward to sharing some more information with you soon. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day.